awesome. We bless you this, this morning, Lord. We bless your holy name, God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hey! <laughs> There's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. If you can't get up, that's fine. Just lay where you're at. going to be hard for you to, on Monday to try to explain what happened on Sunday. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord, hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Your mercies are new every morning. It's exciting to see faces we <laughs> Woo, hallelujah that's just a siren that that warns you that God's in the building <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a siren <laughs> you better look around the Holy Ghost bomb may go off at any minute or anywhere around Where's it going to hit next? <laughs> I told Pastor a while ago, how, how many have been, you know, watching a little bit of the news and people have been trying to take over buildings? I said, these people are getting out of hand. It looks like they're about to take over this building. Like they were marching on the. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. So, stretch a little bit, get situated. Yes. I want to say thank you very much for, for giving. Uh, I think I thank the church for having you know for Pastor David, Pastor D. D. Brooke, and for uh, giving that opportunity of support. It means a lot, Amen. And so, pray this week. Uh, the motorhome I was looking at, the lady's uh, brother passed, and she had to go out of town. So it'll be next week, next, not tomorrow, Monday, but the next Monday to get to go look at it and uh, hopefully be able to come back in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then my sweetheart will be able to come out here. Woo! <laughs> oh, they're headed this way. <laughs> Some of them knows it, and some of them just don't know it yet. But <laughs> well, all I had to do was show a picture of the playground to my granddaughter, and she's like on the plane. <laughs> oh, 
I talked to her on the phone a couple of nights ago. Do I get to play on that? I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> we'll park our motorhome out there. That'll be your playground. <laughs> Woo. So hallelujah. You know, I had <clears throat> myself and Miss Carol and Brother Dan had an awesome opportunity yesterday and I believe what took place at the house there was a prophetic word for today. Uh, Sister Donna brought a young lady over to the house and she was very distraught. In fact, the reason she hadn't come to church is because she can't handle the music and the electronic waves flowing from the TVs and all this stuff. So it, she has uh, brain trauma. She has uh, mold in her brain and some other things that have gotten from stuff that got in the house. And she'd had a heart attack. She'd been had to leave the house because of the mold. Don't have a pl- I mean, all just unlimited number of stuff. So she's just, it's an impossible situation every day. And she couldn't even really tell us when we asked questions because of the confusion going on. But she could cry, and so you could tell it's a pretty traumatic situation. And so I asked her, I said, first we need to pray, pray and see if anybody that's been involved in this, if you know, you need to forgive them. Uh, that's just step one. And, and let God take care of them. And so she said, okay, could you help me pray? Because I can't, I'll do, I'll say what you say. And so we began to pray and we, pr- we prayed a prayer and asked God to heal and do different things. And then uh, Miss Carol handed her, uh, uh, we ran out, we can't get these right now, but we got these right now. So maybe God's switching. <laughs> Revival for America. And, uh, so she handed her that, and as she handed it to her, she put her hands on, her, on the cloth on her stomach, and she began to chuckle a little bit. <laughs> and, and we prayed for a little bit. It was pretty good, and we got up to just, you know, things are good now. And in a, in a few minutes, Sister Donna said, oh, no, she needs some more. And so she was on a, a footstool, so we put her on the couch. And so we prayed for some more. And then she just started hee-hawing. I mean, she was laughing. And this laughing went on for about an hour and a half. Probably from the very first time we prayed, over two hours. And it was so amazing to see the transformation take place right before your eyes. I mean, we got as blessed as she did. We're like, oh, Jesus, look at this. And she would laugh and she would hold. She she could feel the presence of God. She kept doing like this with her fingers. And we're like, what's going on? I can feel it. She's like, it's so amazing. This is so amazing. This is so amazing. I'm like, whoa, man. And she'd slow down a little bit. And I'd say, you know what you need? She said, no. I said, you need another drink. (laughs) And it hit her again. Oh, man. It's the most awesome When she left there, her whole face was different. I mean, there was a glow. She was glowing when she left that place. And uh, we're hopefully, before long, she'll be here. I asked Josh this morning, uh, how was she doing? And I believe the word was, she's still glowing. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) You don't have nothing that a little dose of the Holy Ghost won't help. And uh, so in the midst of that, God, God said, this is a prophetic sign for Pentecost that it's going to be that easy 
And it's going to be that powerful because we really didn't do much praying. We just handed her that, said a simple prayer, touched, I mean, and heaven just started coming. And God said, this is a prophetic word for Pentecost. This is what I'm about to do across the land. And the, I mean, you're going to sit down with people and heaven's just going to fall on them. You know, it's, he said, you shall receive power to be a witness. He didn't say, I gave you power to do a whole lot of talking and try to convince them into something. But I'm going to give you power that when they get close to you, something's going to get on them. It's not going to be a 12-step program. It's going to be a one-step program. Woo! I want to read a little bit in Acts chapter 1 and then Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Those that want to be baptized, I suggest getting dressed. Oh, not yet. (laughs) When we start praying, you can get dressed. <laughs> if you need to, just jump in and what you got on. We are having baptisms today. They've done prayed over the water, anointed with oil. I got some more oil to put in it. I'm telling you, something's going to happen in the water. <laughs> She's holding it down so it doesn't go anywhere. It's awesome to see new faces here I haven't seen before. Of course, I've only been here 12 weeks. But, uh, so Jesus had given them the word, and he's, in fact, in verse 11 or verse 10, it says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus who is taking up from you into heaven will so come in like matter as you saw him go into heaven. So the Lord has left and went up into the clouds. Verse 14, it says, these are because he gave him a mandate to go back to Jerusalem and pray, tarry till you be endued with power from on high. It says in verse 14, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. It wasn't just a little bitty prayer. They were praying. They were crying out to God. They had a a desperate need. Because basically they're locked in this room. And outside of the room is a Roman army that's probably searching for them. And if it's not the Roman army searching for them, it's the Pharisees and the sad, don't you see, searching for them. And so they're locked in this room. You know, when hard times come, it helps you pray. It's amazing we begin to get serious with God. Even sometimes people who are quiet in their prayers begin to get passionate and loud in their prayers. You know, people have said, well, you don't, God's not deaf. It's okay, I want to make sure he hears. I, I need action quick. I want him to hear my prayers. And so, I mean, they're in need. Their leader has left them. He left them with a promise, go and tarry until you're endued with power from the high. Now they had already experienced the taste of that power. They'd walked with Jesus. He had told them, told the 12, now go out, preach the kingdom of God, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. You know, if that was just a taste, where's the church at today? I mean, that wasn't even the dunamis. That was exosia. That was just authority. He gave them authority to go do this. Now he said, I'm about to give you power to do this. Then the 12 did pretty good, so he had 70 more and sent them out. He was just giving them a taste and see. I mean, the 70 came back and said, my gosh, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And, you know, I I just hear the Lord kind of chuckling in his spirit saying, wait till Pentecost. Yeah. Saying, oh, you boys hadn't seen nothing yet. (laughs) Something's about to come on you guys.
he had to be excited like You know, you get excited if you're about to give somebody a gift. You know, I like to watch these YouTube videos where a son goes out and finds dad's original car. Sometimes they find the original VIN number car, have it restored, and bring it and give it to their father, man. You talk about a happy father. You talk about happy son to give that away. Woo. What do you think heaven's thinking? I got something better than a car. I got something better than a house. I got something better than money. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm about to pour myself inside of you. Woo. Woo. They didn't know that yet, though. There's, they're praying and crying out. I mean, they're like, we need some help down here, Lord. You know, I feel like that's what the church, and that's a situation we almost find ourselves in today. We look at what's going on around us, and it's almost hard to believe. It's hard to believe we could be locked up in a quarantine for, still locked up. A lot of people, a lot of places, it's hard to believe the economy of the world could almost shut down. And then as that seems to be ending, it's hard to believe that riots would break out in most every major city in our nation. I mean, it's just like, wake me up from this dream sometime. I bet those guys in the upper room had the same feeling. Because there was that really, that space of 10 days of not knowing. It was one thing to have the resurrection and have Jesus show up to them and begin to talk to them. And I'm sure they were really excited again after they got over, after their mind got over trying to figure out what happened. How is he alive? I mean, that had to be terrifying for him to walk in the room through the doors, but then he's eating fish too. And now for 40 days, he's showing up here and there, and they're pretty excited again. Then it's like, okay, everybody gather together. I got one more speech to give you. And it says there was 500 assembled there, and he talked to them. He told them, go and tear into the upper room till you be endued with power from on high. He told them, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. And they're thinking, wow. And then he says, (laughs) bye-bye. Can can you imagine? Where are you going? I mean, the angels. While they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men. And they also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into the heavens? Because he just left us. I mean, now we done stirred up every hornet's nest in the land. He's made everybody mad. And now he left us. And he tells us to go in Jerusalem and pray. Anybody ever tell you when you're going through a stroke, you need to pray about that, and you want to slap them? I mean, let's just tell the truth. No, I need some help right now. <laughs> I need some help, Jesus. So they're locked in a room. I don't know that it was locked, but basically they can't go nowhere. Quarantine. Yeah. I should have said, I quarantine you to the upper room until you get the virus of the Holy Ghost. And then go spread it around. Do you have the virus? No, but I got something. It's about to get on you, and ain't no doctor can get it off of you. You can't run and you can't hide. <laughs> Woo! You're infected. <laughs> yeah. 
don't touch me, don't touch me. <laughs> See, they know. Those spirits know there's something about the touch. I'm, I'm telling you, I've had, I've had people, don't touch me. I've had people during this revival. I'm just going over to help them, and they're like, don't touch me. Some of them sitting on the front row. <laughs> and so something's, something's coming. I mean, people are going to like. <laughs> yeah. Now, that don't negate speaking the word over them, but there's, when, when the Spirit of God gets on them, it's like a taste and see that the Lord is good. And then something, you know, it may break those chains off of them for a minute that they can come into their right mind and, and listen to what the word of God that you're fixing to speak into their life, that you can plant that seed on good ground and it'll begin to grow inside of them. But to try to... Try to plant a seed with no power is ridiculous. We're full of churches. Churches are full of people, unfortunately. God bless them. That they've come to church to be served. I mean, we might as well uh, buy tickets during the week and show up. At the presentation, at the theater, at the entertainment, and if they don't entertain good enough, there's another theater down the road. I'll go down there and get entertained. Because we, we, we made a decision in our mind, but we really didn't have an encounter with God. We need to experience God. I'm, it changes everything. And sometimes the word leads us to that encounter. But when we have that encounter, I mean, you know, everybody that has an encounter, don't get up and run after heaven after that, unfortunately. But after that encounter, now they've got to make a decision and the blood's not on your hands, it's on their hands. I mean, it's our responsibility that people would have an encounter with heaven. So it messes them up. Something, something they cannot explain with their mind happens. And now they're in this. Woo. I remember this couple. They'd come to church. First church I pastored. They'd come sit on the back row. And as soon as we started the altar call, every week, boom, out of the house. And that went on for a year. I was like, I want to put a net up on the back door. <laughs> In fact, when we start praying, we've, we've notified the ushers to lock the doors. <laughs> That's why we have prayer people scattered out among you. You can't get away. So revival hit our church. We'd been to Brownsville. We had impartation. We came back with a busload of people. Man, the power of God fell in that place. I wish we had cameras back then or phones with cameras. I mean, when the bus drove up and people got out of the bus, people were waiting to pick them up, and the power of God hit them, and they were scattered all over the parking lot. So it was a while before anybody went home. During that revival, the couple came in and sat, and they sat a little closer. And that night, when we were getting ready for the altar call, I saw we were in a metal building, a garage, and I saw like a ball of fire fall out of heaven right on him. I mean, he almost went just, just like knocked him out almost. They drug him up to the altar. Are you ready to get saved?
That's what I'm talking about. So he really asked Jesus into his heart. And then we drug him up and set him in the chair. And I said, there's more. Do you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? I I want everything. I want everything. (laughs) Woo. See, when when you've had a touch from God, there's... It's taste and see the Lord. It's like going to the Golden Corral buffet. And you just go get a plate with one dish on it. You know, you just get the Bourbon Street chicken. I'm a connoisseur of Golden Corral. I mean. When I traveled, there was a buffet a day and snacks along the way. We stop at a gas station, you better get the rest of your food because we're not stopping no more. You know what? The measure of the goodness of a cafe is just a measure of time. If you just ate, it's probably not going to be a good cafe. If you wait about six hours, it's a better cafe. If you wait till tomorrow, it's a really good cafe. About three days, (laughs) be a five-star restaurant. It's just a matter of time. Wives, a husband don't want to eat what you put on the table. Just wait a day or two. (laughs) I hope my wife's not listening. (laughs) So, (laughs) uh uh-oh, surely not. (laughs) So, it's, it's like you just got a little bit of uh, Bur- Bourbon Street chicken, and then you got, you got to get up and leave the restaurant. Are you crazy? I mean, you at least got to eat two plates before you get to the dessert. So when a person's had an encounter with God, I, I just don't see how they can get up and say, I'm really not interested in it anymore. You just got a little taste of it. Like, mm, yeah, no. Like, that's the best stuff I ever, it's like our sister yesterday. This is amazing. This is amazing. Wow. I've never had this before. Woo. He said it'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond anything you could believe or ask for. But it's according to the power that's working inside. How much will you surrender to his power coming inside? I believe the Lord's allowing us to get in such a desperate situation. See, what the church has been doing over the past years is not working. We're going through our motions and our routines and having our little. And the world's rioting, burning stuff down. There's very little respect for the church or the men or women of God. We said one night that the government respects the LGBT and a few other organizations a lot more than they fear the living God, the ministers of God. I mean, they'll mock and jeer at that, but they're not going to say anything about a Muslim. There's no news agency saying anything negative about Muslims. There's none saying anything negative about, I mean, they can have parades down the main street of our cities running pretty much 95% naked and we're just cheering and cheering and say, look at this. Aren't we having a wonderful day today? We can have transvestites in our libraries reading uh, uh, nursery stories to children. Come on, we need to get real now. This is not normal. And how could it be in a public library so there's actually public money going to fund what's taking place? I'm not saying I hate these people. I'm saying they need Jesus. But I'm saying somewhere the church has to be a voice. See, there's, there's no fear. Evil is rolling around and doing whatever it wants to do. And there's no repercussion from it. It's not coming against a wall. It's not coming against. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the Lord and his church. 
But it looks like we're living in a time where we're getting run over by the gates of hell. Jesus told Peter, when he asked him, who do men say that I am? And finally Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed are you, son of, uh, son of Bar-Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven has. And on this rock I'll build my church. Actually, my ecclesia, my ruling council. Not just a building. When, that's why he says when two or three get together, I'm there. Why? Because the ruling council just showed up. That's what that word meant. If you go back to the Greeks before the Romans, it was the governmental ruling council that met in cities and villages to decide how things were going to operate in the villages. Then the Romans used it. Now, why do you think Jesus would use such a word as that? He knew what it meant in his day. It meant a governmental assembly, a ruling council. And he said, I'm going to give this council the keys to the kingdom of God. Woo. Some people think, well, one day we're going to the kingdom. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, it's here now. He said, pray like this. Pray what's happening in earth and heaven would come to this earth. It's... Uh, we need to stop sticking our heads in the sand and waiting for a rescue mission. We are the rescue mission. We're it. We're the answer to the world's problems. Instead of us looking to them for answers, they should be looking to us. But every time the world has a problem, all the church can say is, we're about to leave. Acts 3 says, he's not coming back until the restoration of all things. And if you look up that word restoration, it means like it was in the garden before the fall. So he's coming back sometime, but that we got some stuff to do. And we can't do it without the Holy Ghost. I mean, 90, probably thought 90, I'll make up my own statistics as I go along just from experience. They're about as good as most news media statistics. What I'd say probably 75% of the church in America doesn't even believe in a need for the Holy Ghost today. But I believe we're coming to a point where they're looking around, just like so many uh, Southern Baptist missionaries go overseas. What happens to them overseas? They get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because devils are showing up. Me uh, medicine men are showing up and they go in their closet and they begin to pray God I need something because I'm terrified right now <laughs> then they have their own Pentecost boom <laughs> then they come back out of that little prayer closet saying bring them on <laughs> then they come back to the states and their directors are looking up like what happened to you <laughs> you look different than when you left here well, in Bible school, you guys didn't teach me about the medicine, man. You didn't teach me about these principalities and powers. You didn't teach me about spiritual warfare. But I found out on my own. I got to praying and supplicating. And heaven came into my closet. Gave me this language. Shata robo kondaraba shata. Oh, you can't do that here. <laughs> yeah, amen. I mean, that's what happened. For years, they said if anybody speaks in tongues, any of our missionaries, they have to come back off of the mission field and they can't minister anymore. And I'm not just picking on something, I'm saying that's where the church has been in general. No wonder we're missing the boat. Because everything God calls us to do, is, it depends on power. I mean, Jesus is getting ready to go, and he's got a last few words. Acts chapter 1, some of those words, it says he was speaking to them about the things of the kingdom of God. And, and they're thinking, well, when are we going to rule and reign? 
He said, it's not right now. You're not ruling and reigning over the Roman Empire. You're ruling and reigning over the principalities and powers of darkness. And he said, don't worry about when you're going to rule and reign in Jerusalem. Worry about you're fixing to be endued with power from on high. If he told those 12, don't you do nothing. Don't go try to preach. Don't go lay hands on nobody. I'm going to take this into our time. Don't get on the radio. Don't get your business cards printed up. Don't get your Facebook page open yet. Don't you do nothing. Now people to say, today will say, well, we had the fullness of the word. Well, those young guys had the word made flesh and dwelt among them. If Jesus couldn't teach you how to live this life in three and a half years, it can't happen. He still said, with all I've taught you guys, and see, they're still not understanding the kingdom yet because they hadn't been baptized in power yet because the kingdom's not in word or deed. It's in a demonstration of power. That's why I said, don't go nowhere. Go to that upper room and stay. They didn't know what was coming. They were probably trying to figure out how to scatter. He's done left them. But out of the 500 that heard, 120 stayed. And on the day of Pentecost had fully come, heaven came. Woo! Woo! Now the doors were about to bust off that upper room and nobody could stop it. No devil, no principality, no power, no ruler, no president, no king, no governor, no mayor, nobody. No Roman Empire, nobody. No Pharisee, no Sadducee, no religious demons, nobody could stop what was about to happen. Heaven just blew the place up. Blew the doors open. It's amazing how everything we worry about at times, everything we're afraid of, the future we're worried about and concerned about the future, especially if we're dealing with anxiety or fear or depression, we're worried about What's going to happen tomorrow? People around the world are worried about what are they going to eat? Where are they going to stay? What are they going to do? It's amazing. Probably in those 10 days, I wonder what they were thinking. Because it hadn't been long ago, 50-something days, that Peter had denied Jesus three times. The others had all fled. And now they're locked in the upper room. And it's the worst odds you can think of. What's going to happen when we come out of here? What are people going to say about us? Will we just have a story to tell about what's happened in the past three years? Or will we have something living inside of us? They're wandering around in that room like some of you are probably wandering around today thinking, what am I going to do tomorrow? How am I going to handle this problem? What am I going to do? What, what's going to happen in our nation, in our country, in our capital, in our capitals of our states, with our governors, with our government? What are we going to do? What's going to, what? You almost feel like I, I, I want to go somewhere and hide out. But see, God has an answer. Because we're not much different than where they were 2,000 years ago. We got some different clothes and different haircuts and maybe a few different different colors of skin. But we got that same human nature. All of them were scared. They were asking. Let me read that. 
It says in verse 6, Acts 1, verse 6, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Will you kick the Romans out, restore it to Israel? I mean, two of the brothers had already been, uh, their mother went to Jesus and said, Jesus, I gotta, I'm asking you a favor. When, when you come into your kingdom, could my son sit on your left side and your right side? When you're ruling Israel, Jesus, can we sit in that governmental seat with you in Israel? Then we can ride in the big chariots. We can eat the best food. Jesus said, don't worry about that time. I got something else for you. See, before before we're going to transform what you're seeing with your eyes, we're about to to wreak havoc on what you can't see with your eyes. I believe in Corinthians it says the things that are invisible are more real than the things that are visible. You think when I sent you out house to house it was good, but something's coming on you. Woo! You're not going to be concerned about your kingdom. You're not going to be concerned about sitting in one of those seats up there in that governmental authority. You're not going to be concerned about running the Pharisees out of the temple and sitting there because you're about to become the temple and I'm about to fill your temple. Woo! Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. (laughs) Most of the time when God shows up, it's generally or suddenly. Now, the intercessors, us who've been meeting, those who've been coming during the week, we've been plowing the ground. God's been showing up. To me, it's almost like what happened with Jesus and his disciples. Things were happening. Sick people were being healed. Things were going on. But we've been looking for more. We've been looking for a Pentecost, a day of Pentecost to come, where he's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. We've been pressing in for a breakthrough. We've been pressing in for a suddenly. You didn't show up here today by accident. Hallelujah. Y'all saw the start of that video a while ago. When, when, you know, I was actually 20 years ago. My hair was brown and a little longer. That was on the night of Y2K in the year 2000. When I took a, a couple of van loads of people to a revival meeting that had been going on for five years. It's the longest running revival in the history of America. I took them down there saying, every time we had a gas stop, something's going to happen to you tonight. You just don't understand because I'd taken buses and people and cars, and every time we took people, something happened to them. They, it was a suddenly. And I told them all, you just don't know what's about to happen to you. And then pastor called for people to give testimonies. And I stayed standing and raised my hand, and he said, yeah, you. So I was one of the six or seven. They pulled up there. And now there's 2,500 people in this church. I'm just a little country preacher, you know, about 60, 80, 100 people. I'm really excited. I'm pretty excited today. (laughs) 
And there's, there's two ladies in front of me that are giving their testimony, and they'd already told us five-minute testimony. That's it. In fact, they've spent 30 minutes telling us how to give a five-minute testimony. <laughs> Michael Brown's a teacher. He had to get up and teach on how to give a testimony. So here's how God works with me. I don't know about you. But I mean, reality is setting in now. I'm standing on this platform with all these people. And my mind's saying, I'm, now I'm beginning to pray. I should have prayed before I raised my hand. Lord, here's my prayer. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? And here's how I got answered. Shut up, stupid. I'm about to tell you what to say. He may not talk like you, to, to you like that, but I understood that. You now, some people prophesy over you, and you're looking at them when they walked away like, what does that mean? He made it real plain. It's like, shut up your praying, stupid. I'm about to tell you what to say. Well, it might have shut my praying up, but it didn't shut my nervous up. My knees were knocking. I mean, it's like. <laughs> Those ladies did theirs. He, he came up. Pastor Kilpatrick held the microphone. What's your name? Where are you from? And I start talking. I'm, I'm, I'm from, you know, I'm Bill Easter. I'm from Bolivar, Tennessee. I'm a pastor up there. And I'm telling you, while I'm beginning to speak that, there's like a volcano down inside here called the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and he's saying, it's about time for you to get out of the way. I'm about to take over. And he did that. I mean, stuff started coming out like I had no control over it. It's like, I'm wanting to clap like everybody else. That's good. <laughs> Some of the time I'm saying, I can't believe I just said that. And it's just blowing up. And the pastor just keeps going. I know I went past my five minutes. He just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. People are jumping and shouting and stuff. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Then he finally, even the pastor, if you watch, he would put the microphone down and jump around the platform. Later on, his people said, we've never seen him do that before. And finally, he just hands me the microphone. That's what you don't do in a testimony. He said, son, I'm tired of jumping. Here, you just hold the microphone. So we're talking about suddenlies. I'm telling them all the way down there, you just don't know what's going to happen to you tonight. Me not having a clue, it's me he's talking to. I'm thinking later. You sure fooled me, didn't you, huh? They did call the rest of our group up on the platform, prayed for them. They're all laying on the ground. Finally, they drug me down and put me that. Somebody got out of the chair right there, put me in that chair. And about two minutes, I fell out of that chair. Somebody else sat down and they fell out of the chair. The newspaper said... The message of Steve Hill, he was the evangelist. He'd preached every, every meeting for five years. He had preached those meetings. Nobody else had ever preached another meeting. The newspaper said the message of Steve Hill's lifetime will be preached tonight at Brownsville. Y2K, the change of a millennium. The change of a millennium at the longest running revival in the history of America. What's the chances of God fishing some hillbilly preacher out of the crowd to give a message? (laughs) 
You just don't know when your suddenly's coming. I mean, you're serving, I'm getting them in the van, drive, let's stop here, let's go here, get the motels on. You're just serving people. And heaven's smiling. I just wonder what the Lord, (laughs) ooh, Bill's about to get wrecked tonight. Something else happened in that service. I'd had dealings with a couple of people at two of my churches. I was at my second church at that time. In the first church, we'd brought a lady in to help with the youth. She'd come out of Teen Challenge. And we were doing street ministry. And one after we, and it was just a, mess and she's supposed to know how to do this and we went back to Hardy's to eat when we're at Hardy's she started telling all my church people it was my fault that it didn't go good and I didn't have no I mean I'm just she's the professional here so after a couple days I visited with her and I said if you got a problem with me Me and you talk on the side, but don't come in front of my people and start pointing your finger in my face and telling me all everything I did wrong when it really wasn't my fault. I'll be glad to meet with you and talk if you got a problem, but that's not the proper time to do it. So she went into fasting and prayer. Three days later, we had a meeting and she said, God's not happy with you. In fact, if you don't repent to me, he's going to kill you. You're going to die. I'm still alive. (laughs) And by the way, you're fired. (laughs) Now, if I need to repent, I'll repent. I've repented to a lot of people. But I'm not going to bow down to some Jezebel. And then at the next church, we had another bright individual. We're having to have our yearly annual budget whatever meeting since we got a board And in that meeting, we're supposed to choose new board members because our handbook says if we have, we, we're supposed to have six board members. No matter if we only got 50 people, we need six board members. And we only had four. And the only qualifications be a member of the church for one year. So when I got voted in there, I got 100% vote. But after a few weeks, one friendly fellow was upset because I did not preach from the King James Version. I preached from the New King James Version. After he'd missed a couple of months, he was a farmer. He had a big auction. And I, you know, I went down to pray over his auction that God would bless him. He comes up to me and says, If you was hearing from God, you would have been down here helping me clean all this farm equipment. He said, I would have even paid you some. (laughs) Would you rather me clean the farm equipment or pray over the farm equipment? Next week, I'll be down back down here to wash your car for you. if That'll be okay. So then a month or two later, we have our annual board meeting, business meeting. Everybody's invited. The night before on Saturday night, 
one of our lovely, lovely Sunday school teachers, also a licensed minister, invited me over to his house. My wife and them were gone. We'll cook dinner for you. Okay, praise God. Went over there, and he had a 30-minute sermon before we ate. <laughs> So Wednesday night is the board meeting. So this guy, other guy that hadn't been there in four months shows up at the, at the meeting. I'm like, what is he doing here? He ain't been here in four months. My buddy that fed me dinner the night before, when we said, okay, we're going to you know, think about nominating some board members. And he stood up and said, I nominate Joe. The guy that just fed me dinner is nominating the guy that hadn't been there in four months. What's wrong with this picture? And that's my first business meeting. I didn't, I didn't have Robert's rule of order memorized yet. I still don't have it memorized. I was at a conference and this pastor was talking and he said, you know, I've been trying to write my constitution bylaws and all this for our ministry for a pretty good while. And he said, one day God showed up. He said, what are you doing? So I'm not trying to write these constitution and bylaws. He said, you won't need them unless I leave. <laughs> and that's when you'll need them. Because everybody be having a fight. We got to do this. We can't do this. <laughs> so I came up with a great idea. <laughs> Let's just keep those four we got for another year. We'll do some more training. And if you want to do that, say yes. We'll have a vote. And if you want to nominate Joe and vote on him, we'll say no. <laughs> and we had like 23 yeses and 12 noes. Praise God. <laughs> then Joe... Got up out of his seat and came down the building and blessed out all four of our board members. Wow. I'm better than you. I can do this better than you. Rah, 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 rah. I'm like, you got to be kidding. And I'm sitting in the back talking to somebody and he comes back there. He said, I got something to say to you. You embarrassed me in front of all these people. And one day you're going to be climbing on your hands and knees down to my house to apologize to me for what you did. I still hadn't been down to his house. We're not going to play games with those devils. In fact, he said, God hates you. And he says, he's going to kill you. I mean, I got two people telling me, God, God's going to kill me. So I get down to Brownsville, which was just in between there. And Pastor Kilpatrick, if you watch, he's talking and he says, Brother Love. Nobody else knew what that meant, but I knew what that meant. God was saying that, so I'm not wanting to kill you. I love you. Woo. So I was all messed up. I'll tell the rest of the story sometime. The rest of the story, I'm here now. <laughs> Suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Whew. 
During those times at Brownsville, God baptized me in fire. That video from that testimony, they, didn't ha- they had it on local cable station, but not on not like uh, the God TV or none of that. And we had copies of VHS. So the, the testimony that night actually launched, four months later, launched me out from the church to travel. So that was in the year 2000. So I've been traveling 20 years. It's 20 years since that happened. When I left the church there in Tennessee, because after all that man said that night, I called the board in the back and I said, his membership needs to be removed. He needs to be not be allowed in this church till he repents before people. Yeah. And they said, oh, no, brother, he didn't really mean it. He'll be okay. Yeah. And I thought, you are not serious about God. Amen. And I'm not spending my life in a place playing games. I'm not here for politics. I'm here for heaven. Yeah. See, maybe you guys didn't experience what I did, but I'm telling you, some fire lit me up. Yeah. And that fire ain't messing around with a bunch of junk. I began to pray a couple of months later in April. Prayed for three weeks. I said, God, if you want me to stay here and last till I, till these board members exit and new ones come in so we can do something, I'll stay here. But that's probably going to be 10 years. I really don't want to do that. God, if you don't send me places. Where people want heaven. God, I don't care where it's at. I don't want to waste my time with people that don't care. God, send me somewhere where people want to see a move of God. I need to sit down. So it kind of seems like God sent me on a mission for 20 years looking for a place. I've been to the tip of Key West, Florida. I've been to Barrow, Alaska, the very top of Alaska. I've been in Eskimo villages all along the Arctic banks. We've seen some revival break out. Most of the revivals, some of those you saw up there, happened on reservations. Out in the middle of nowhere. Because God had hungry people. But it seems like something would happen that would abort the mission. But you can't give up when you're looking for gold. See, I found the pearl of great price. It's worth the price. It's 
worth whatever we have to pay. Couldn't tell you all the churches I've been in. and Good people. But a lot of people just don't want to pay the price for revival. I mean, I was flabbergasted when pastor said, let's go two weeks. Because how long has it been since you heard of any church anywhere that went two weeks with anything? I mean, it used to be revivals back even before I was saved. It was at least two weeks. We'll go two weeks, see what happens, and then see if we're going to continue on. But now, revival's been, we're going to have Sunday morning, Sunday night. That's revival. No, it ain't revival. It may be a good meeting, but it's not revival. So I was pretty shocked when they said, let's go two weeks. And I was really shocked when we got quarantined and they said, let's go anyway. So the first revival I've ever preached where we had to tell people to stay at home. (laughs) No, you can't come. (laughs) That's why we're so excited to see (laughs) y'all. Woo! Heaven came suddenly and sent 120 people out into a city that was unprepared for what was about to happen. But 3,000 people got saved on the first day. There was such a boldness and such a change in their lives. I mean, they'd been with Jesus. They'd seen miracles, but something happened. It's like Philip preaching in Samaria when uh, miracles happened in the city. Even the uh, bar Jesus, the sorcerer, the magician, the, they call him the great man of God because of the magic he did. He followed uh, Philip around, and he was amazed at the miracles. But then when James and John showed up, the apostles, Peter and John, one of the two, And they said, have they received the Holy Spirit since they've been saved? Not yet. Because they'd been saved, they'd been baptized. So the apostles laid hands on them, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And something that the sorcerer saw then, he said, oh, can I buy that? How much is that going to cost me? It's amazing to me that the lame walking, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing... All these other miracles, great joy coming to the city. And never did the sorcerer say, can I buy that? But when he saw James and John lay hands on people and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire, he said, I want to buy that right there. I want the power to do that. Man, that's something if somebody is working magic and stuff, I guess he figured, you know, some of these miracles he could sleight of hand make look like they're happening but what happened when they laid hands on them he knew i can't do that there's nothing i can do that when i touch people that will so transform them to begin to look and act like they're lacking right now he just didn't understand you can't buy it (laughs) what it's going to cost you your life It changed them. That's what Pentecost is about. People left out of a room in the most desperate of situations and went boldly standing before their enemies and saying, repent, you're the ones that crucified him. One day before, that would have cost them their heads. Why? Because it would have been empty. But now when they spoke it, there was power that came out. And the word of God struck them like a sword and went into their hearts. They were pierced in their hearts. And they said, what must we do to be saved? We got a lot of people that are sending words out there, but there's no power to pierce the heart. 
And without the Holy Ghost power to pierce the heart, we're just dust in the wind. Most revivals stop because people want to put a limit on it. It's getting a little wild. Daddy Big Bucks don't like what's going on, and he's going to leave if you don't cut back some. Because conviction's coming, because the light of God is shining on his heart, and he's got secrets that are hidden there, and God wants to set him free, but he wants to hang on to those chains and sin more than he wants to be set free. Because revival is bringing a sword. It brings us the light of heaven that shines on our hearts, not to kill us or destroy us, but to purify and refine us, to be the sons and daughters of God that God wants us to be, that we can walk in power and authority, that we can heal the sick and raise the dead, that we don't back down to no devils or nobody. Thank you, Lord. I think I'm about to find the right crowd. (laughs) So y'all go ahead and lock the doors. discussion is oh, what we're going to do now <laughs> yeah we are going to baptize I mean it's only one o'clock thank you Lord Jeez, that's really early isn't it these are four hour cushions I'm gonna say something. I want to say it starts when you get give your life to Christ Yes. If you have never given your life to Christ, you get her done today. Right. You make your way up here. Secondly, secondly, this is what Jesus said. What Bill's been talking about, what he's been saying all along is this. What, the, what Christ did, what he set the Holy Spirit to do down here is to fulfill this. Now listen, this is what it says. These are the things that are supposed to be fallen us. And he said to them as you go into all the world, last words that Jesus said to them before as, as Mark saw it at the end with the way he wrote it, preach openly the wonderful news of the gospel to in, the entire human race. Whatsoever, whosoever believes the good news and is baptized will be saved. And whosoever does not believe, the good news will be condemned. What does that mean? What does that mean? For all of you that are listening that have never given your life to the Lord, that have been messing around, and that's the stream. That's the stream. That's to the life, the Facebook people. If you have never given your life to Jesus, that means condemned, means you are going to rot in hell if you do not give your life to Christ. Amen. Essentially, that's what it means. And that we can't, we can't sauce soap it. We cannot make it easy. If you do not give your life to Jesus, come on. You are going to rot in hell and you will never die. You will just be continuously rot. How's that sound? Or you live a life with Christ. This is what else it said. This is what's supposed to be following us. And these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. If you're a believer, this is what's supposed to be following us. If we're believers, this is what's supposed to be following us. Signs will accompany those who believe. That's right. They will drive out demons. Not be afraid of them in my name. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in tongues. All right, what does that mean? What happens when you pray the perfect will of God? Tongues is the perfect will of God. This is what it means. If you want to get in a situation and you want to fulfill all this, what Bill's talking about is what happened in Pentecost. The Lord said this. you got to be born again. Then you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit with his power to accomplish this. 
How many, how many times do we see in the denominational churches? I'm not, I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying they, have, they walk in a part of what God has for them instead of the fullness of what God has for us. And how do we walk in the fullness? We get filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. We ask the Holy Ghost. You're, you're born again. You got the whole package. You got the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But in order to do what God said to do, that's supposed to be fullness. This is what's supposed to be following our lives. We're supposed to be filled with the power of the Amen. Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you can do this. That's the only way you can feel, fulfill what God said as a believer. As a believer, this is what's supposed to follow you. Why did Jesus say those last words? And then he comes and he tells us how to do it. We get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. We get filled with the, uh, the, this dunamis from on high. And then you walk in what God has called you to walk in. You walk in the fullness of what he has called you to walk in. Because if you don't, can you imagine standing before Jesus? Think about this. You stand before Jesus. And you say, Lord, I was taught that that was of the devil. <laughs> the tongues. And here Jesus says it right in the book of Acts. One of the gospels right there in Mark. What do we do? Do we abandon the book of Acts? No. Do we abandon the first, first Corinthians? Do we abandon the scriptures? No. What he's saying, in order for us to fulfill what God has called us to do, we have to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, Amen. with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yeah. Because we don't know what to pray in tongues. We don't know what to do at times. We don't know what to say at times. We have no idea what to do. When all of a sudden, here's the whole, this congregation of people are condemning you and speaking evil of you and the things that they're doing. Children of God speaking the way they spoke to this man who loved him and tried to help him. What do you do? You just go, well, some, some pastors, they go blow their heads off. They do. Shake the dust and go on. Amen. Okay, now this is a this is what God wants. And then whatever Bill wants to do. Some of you have not been walking with the Lord. Some of you haven't. It's time to get right with the Lord. Some of you, some of you have been playing church, but with there's secret things going on inside of you. You know who you are. You know what those things are. You get that taken care of. And then there's this. He wants to fill you up afresh and anew with this Holy Spirit and with his power. Do you want that? Stand up. And then we're going to, whatever Bill's going to do, it's going to be wild. We guarantee you. For those of you that are watching right there, just right there, those that are watching by home that, stand, uh, that are part of this right now, just stand up right where you're at. Just stand up right where you're at. Just, just, yeah, get, we know you're in your PJs. But Ken and Bev her. Thank you. It's an honor to serve with you, sister. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Hey, David, the key is, first and foremost. I believe people need to come to the front and repent. Very good. Things Very are Very good. And, and then we're going to go Come on. on down. I believe there needs to be yeah. an act yeah. that goes yeah. forward There's nothing like and the surrender altar. it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on down. If you've been Jesus. away from God, if you've been in, yeah. away from God and you had not had that walk with God, come on down. Today is your day. You're here for a purpose. Just come on. Come on in. Come on, Cal. Come to the. So we're going to just pray. We're just asking God to search our hearts. God, wash us. Some of you are coming back to him saying, saying, Jesus, I'm sorry that I walked away. Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not 
burning like I was at another time. Some years ago, God, I had a fire burning inside of me, God, and I've let that grow cold. But today, God, everything changes. Some of you, this is the day that's such a time as this. This is your suddenly. You're making a decision today. No more running. No more halfway in and halfway out. But God, I'm all in. I want it all in. I want everything you have for me, God. If you're in that place, you need to come. You need to say, Jesus, right now, I ask you to forgive me of anything I've done that's offended you. Lord, forgive me if I've grown cold. Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for me. Shed your blood to wash away every sin. I believe you're buried in a grave and raised from the dead to give me resurrection life. And right now, God, I ask you to baptize me with Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, huh? Let fire come, Lord. Let fire come. Let heaven come. Satarabo Kotaraba. Fire. Oh. Fire of heaven. Fire of heaven. Fire of heaven. Fire of heaven. Come on. Need some helpers. Fire. Fire of heaven. Fire of heaven. Satarabo Kotaraba. God, fill him up. Fill him up. Make things brand new, God. Let things be different when he walks out of this place. God. Never be the same. God, let the fire of heaven come right now. Baptize him in fire, God. Fire! Come on. More. 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 Help. Shh, come on, come on, just receive it. More, 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 more. Never the same, God. God, we're, we're just, mm, today's a day of death. Mm, today's a shift, it's a changing point. Shatarabo, satarabo, satarabo. Shekatarabo, kutarabo. Fire! Fire! God baptized her with fire, God. With fire. They came a long way, God. They're, they want something from heaven, God. You're here to bring it. Let fire come, Lord. Woo, let fire. Yeah, come on. Let fire come, Lord. God, shift, God. Bring healing in this family. Healing in her husband, God. We rebuke that cancer. Hatarabo, shataraba. God, let Pentecost fire come. God, when we come out of this house today, out of this room today, things are going to look different, sound different, be different, God. Woo! Fear, worry, or going. God, everything that had us held back. Now, go! Go! We got you. Come on, heaven. Come on. Fire! Fire! Ooh, good catch. Fire! How? Fire! 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 Fire of heaven. Fire of heaven. Make things brand new, God. Make things brand new, God. We leave this place, we'll be different. Fire!
other people just keep praying for them. Let it be a burning man, God. fire. Touch us with fire from heaven, God. Fire! Baptize us with fire, Lord. With fire, God. With fire, God. Oh, fire! Fire! If you need extra prayer for healing, just find somebody with the prayer cl- tag on. <laughs> Thank you, God. 
you equip us to run this race, God. We won't grow weary, but we would be endued with power from on high, Lord God. Let us mount up on the wings of eagles. Let us run, God. Whoa, fire. That was suddenly what? top of our head to the bottom of our feet, God. She's going to put her hand on your stomach. Fire! Mm. Refiner's fire, God. Who touch us, God. We need a touch from heaven, God. We need a touch from heaven, God. God, let us out of that upper room, endued with power from on high, God. Whoa. Fire! Oh, fire! I'm not meaning to push, it's just. Watch this lady. For those that want to get baptized, go ahead and get dressed if you can. If you don't have clothes, we do have extra clothes.
If you don't have clothes and you don't want to wear yours in the pool, we do have extra. So go to that door over there and see the tall guy. Eric, raise your hand and stand by that door if you can. And Pastor Crystal, you have clothes and the towels for baptism. I just wanted to confirm that's what she wanted. Okay, there's clothes in the foyer if you would like to be baptized. This is going to be a wild baptism. So Eric, Eric will be out there to give you your sizes, and there's towels and everything. So, And then you need to leave them here. Small to 3X. So it's from every size. They're out there. We're going we're gonna to do baptism. People are getting dressed right now. Or you can go in your clothes and go home wet. You know, you're already dressed. Good. All right, you're dressed. All right, start lining up over here in this aisle. Okay. So you do. Can I have an usher up here, please? Oh, sure. Uh, he said he brought his clothes. I mean, I've got my stuff. You want me to change? So what we're trying to do is keep it clear because keep Linda, 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 we need to get Linda. Linda Montanti. Linda Montanti. Renato. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna change. So everyone who's gonna get baptized, we're gonna have you line up around here, come this way because we want to get a straight shot with the camera. 
So line up your line going this way. Yeah, careful of the people on the floor. Don't step on anyone. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Perfect, thank you everyone. Okay, anybody else for baptism? Just go get your shoes off and get the new. Are you wanting it? Are you going to get baptized? All right. Why don't we? Good. Are you at the end or the beginning? He's getting oh, right there. Okay. Is it okay? Okay, anybody else for baptism? Just go get your shoes off and get the new. Are you going to get baptized? So I don't know if you'd be interested in going back there, but. Okay, everybody. Watch the screen. You can watch it if you're sitting back wherever so you can enjoy what God is ready to do.
All right, folks. We're going to get started on baptism. If you change your mind and you want to get involved in baptism, the line's going to be over there. We're going to come through this way. We want to keep this aisle clear so we can keep them on the camera, okay? So let's celebrate everybody who's coming in. This is an awesome moment of God here. They can go down this way. So when they come out, they're going to walk through here. So if you want to greet someone or give them a hug, kind of wait in the back. They'll be there for you. Give them a hug too back there, okay? ago the Lord gave me an assignment however I thought it was for that time and the assignment was to take communion every hour on the hour for 24 hours and I tried I thought it was at that time so I tried it and I didn't even make an hour and a half and fell asleep but Friday night I told Pastor Reese Friday night my assignment started at 9 p.m. And it went till Saturday night at 1 p.m. I set my alarms for 158, 258, 358, and so on. Every every hour I got up to take the communion, and and I watched um, revivals continuously. And then they got to go to Shatakia, Papa Pasha, Isaka, Papa Kasakoya, Hariata Koya, and so um, when I came into church today, like I, 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 I couldn't walk in, and uh, um, so the Holy Spirit is said that this assignment had a purpose. And the purpose was for the healing of the body. And it was for healings in the church, for people's hearts to be healed, for people's minds, wills, and emotions. Lord God, for physical needs and people to get out of wheelchairs and people to stand up and that, that never could, Lord. And that's the assignment the Lord gave me. And, oh, and it's, it was completed. Thank you, Lord Jesus, by him. Yeah. I am ready to be baptized now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, let the fire and healing come. Hey, Nathan. So somebody asked me if I was going to get baptized again, and I said, oh, yes, I am. Every time I go up a level, I'm getting back in. <laughs> so we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
everybody has to. Father, right now I declare my children yours. Amen. And right now we just pat, baptize you guys in the name. You want in? You want to go in? We baptize you guys in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this is Leah, one of our youth. And we just baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and fire. So this is Nick, and uh, we could really tell, I could tell during service, the Lord was really moving, and Holy Spirit was really moving on him. And so it is a great honor and privilege. Welcome home, my friend. So we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and fire! So 30 years ago, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. 17 years ago was the last time I was baptized. And recently, the Lord has removed, he's rolled the stone away from the tomb. And I have come out, and now I'm going to hit the, round, the ground running, living for him and him only. His will be done. I completely and fully surrender to the Lord today. My life is his. Right, Deb. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And fire!
So uh, this is Andrew. Andrew and his beautiful family have come to us, and, and they've been here going on three weeks now. Here every day the doors open, and uh, just the way the Lord's moving in his life is just so amazing. And I can't wait to see what the Lord's going to do next, my friend. Sure. So, Andrew, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And fire. And fire. passages. I worship you, O oh Lord, help me. I'm hungry even for the crumbs that fall from your table. Let healing come to me as I de desire. Jesus, I come to you in the midst of the multitude right now, and I'm hungrier for your healing than for food. I feel your compassion for me, and I know that you will heal me. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, for my bones are troubled. I declare that this is my time to be healed. You will restore health to me and heal me of my wounds. The power of the Lord is present to heal me. Let news of your healing power, O oh Lord, be like a ripple effect, causing all those near and far to come so that they will be healed. Let many gather so that there will be no more room to receive them, that may, they may hear the preaching of the word and be healed. In Jesus' name. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And fire. for three years because of this woman right here. Put your hand up. She didn't give up on me. I shouldn't be married today and I shouldn't have my three-year-old or this one. My life should have went down the hole a long time ago. So, um, yeah, here we go. Praise God. <laughs> We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And fire!
Starting seven months ago, I moved from Nashville, New Hampshire. I was not in a good place. I was um, quite in the darkness. I moved here, going to be a year this September. And what an amazing experience I've had by living here and being with all of you. Welcome to the family. It's been a pleasure. And Lord, we just thank you right now for what you're doing and what you continue to do in our life right now in Jesus' name. So we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. baptized in fire in 2016 and since before a little before quarantine the Lord has been just purifying me and cutting things off of me and he's prepared me and now today he's sending me out in ministry thank you father for what you're doing in me right now in Jesus name So we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And fire! Yeah. All right! Good. All right. Jesus, this has been a long time coming. God help me through the rest of my life. Thank you all. Amen. So we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be healed in the name of Jesus and Holy Ghost fire. dedicate my life to a complete empowerment of Holy Spirit. Because I've had all the words, but I haven't had the power. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's <laughs> bring it on. Bring it in. Have a seat down there. All right, you want to sit? Might be yeah, easier. Yeah. All right, there you go. You'll make it. Okay, you just grab your nose. Oh, yeah, thank you. And we just baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Jesus saved me. He healed me. He delivered me. And he set me free from the power of darkness. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing in your bride. And send us to the nations. Send me. Here I am. Thank you. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for what you're doing and what you've already done. So we just baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in the fire. says if a seed must fall to the ground and die before it produces life and it says in Romans 6 it says do you not know that you are going to be planted in the death of Christ and you are going to be raised up in the new resurrection of life so Lord right now I just say that I am I am widowed to sin and I am married to righteousness for the rest of my days until Christ comes when he knocks on that door, I am going to be a pure, spotless bride before my king. In Jesus' mighty name. Well said, Lord. Sure, yeah. Baba. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for fire, Lord. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And fire!
Chunk is good. Go ahead. I'm in the right place. I'm in you are. Okay, so down here. We baptize you in the name of the Father, oh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. same. you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And fire! Anybody else? God for an awesome day. Thank you for the day of Pentecost. God, we believe that every person that walks out of this building, they're walking out of that upper room with a Holy Ghost experience, Lord, that's going to transform their lives, God. Father, this is the beginning of really lighting the top of this mountain on fire, Lord. 